Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Welcome to today's podcast, the Young Smurfs podcast. And I'm with a very, 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 very special guest today, Sheikh Yusuf Esther. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. I'm interested to ask you a question, John, yeah. if I could. Uh, let's start with that. You call your <coughs> your program Young Smirks. Yeah. I've seen some other things on the YouTube that's similar to that, but yeah. uh, Smirks. Yeah, your Smirks is like smile. You know? Oh. Smile is sunnah. I, I thought a Smirk was kind of like, like when somebody's got a hidden agenda and they go, <laughs> 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 like that. <laughs> oh, but it just means a little. You know, it's like a, you know, a bit of a smile. Or humorous. A smirk. Humorous. Okay. And we're young. We're both young. Uh, yeah, I'm only one day old, by the way. Oh, yeah. Cause yeah, I just made Hajj. So, so after that, you like come back again. to your folks <coughs> as though you just came from your mom. So I must be a day old now. <laughs> no, we just completed Hajj. Oh, yeah, I've got my uh, Hajj haircut. Whoa. Alhamdulillah. That's all. That comes as a shock when you lift that black cap off and you see that glare come. <laughs> uh, I guess I, I should fine. do the same thing. Uh, mashallah, fresh, uh, fresh haircut, mashallah. Yeah. You know, subhanAllah, I remember <laughs> when me and you, we met in England originally. True. We traveled around doing dawah. I was following I enjoyed you around. that so much. I was filming. You helped me do that Bridge to Faith series. Bridge to Faith. And we, we got, did the Christmas. Yeah, we did the Christmas series. We were in Doha for that. Uh, uh, no, we did that in uh, the building in London. Do you remember that office? But then we went to Qatar. Yeah. We had a program in Qatar. And then and we I, did it on the second floor over there. <coughs> but I want to mention something which relates to the Hajj. Mm. I remember we was having breakfast one day in Qatar. And you said, we need your passport. You know, we're um, for the hotel or something. And the next day you gave him our passport back. And we had Umrah visas. Uh-huh. Do you remember that? And we came to Umrah together. SubhanAllah. It's beautiful, mashallah. Was that the first Umrah you performed? No, no, I'd been to, I'd been to Hajj before that. Ah. A few years before that. And but it always feels good to do Umrah again, like doesn't it? Time, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's been great over the years traveling around with you, doing dawah. Have you checked out those motor scooters that they have now going around for tawaf? Have you seen those? No, I've not seen them. Actually, no, they're they're available. Suppose. You have to pay money for them. Yeah. But then you get on there, and it's big enough for two people. So my wife and I, uh, in Ramadan, we got on there and just you went do around. Tawaf. Yeah. Make it you easy for you. It was easy. Sheikh, it's a pleasure to have you on the podcast. and uh, uh, It's great to be here with you. A great inspiration. Tell me more about podcasts because uh, this is kind of new to me. This is the new thing. Basically, it's just a show. Yeah. You know, you've been doing podcasts before podcasts well, even existed. Well, we, we started with uh, something called Eddie with the Dean Show. Exactly. And uh, Yusha Evans and I was there with Eddie and myself and we had a lot of fun with that. Yeah. These days it's more like a video, like a radio channel if you like. They have the microphones showing. Yeah. It's kind of the modern style of podcast. And they also put the audios online as well. People and notice we don't have a desk either. Yeah. That's you know, always the yeah. I mean the my podcast host is, is more, supposed to have a big desk yeah. and mine's more run and gun, obviously, because I travel a lot. I try to keep it, you know, quite yeah. you know, small and just set up wherever I meet people. Now, some of the programs that we've done in the past, we've talked about things related to Christians coming to Islam. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the idea of Christmas trees. We've spoken mm -hmm. about Easter eggs and how could a rabbit lay colored eggs and, and <laughs> joking around and had some fun yeah. with that. But uh, I was wondering if we could uh, discuss some of the things that face a, a person who's kind of new to Islam and he, he just entered Islam. He said, okay, there really is one God, yeah. but I'm not sure about everything else. Mm. Have you experienced something like that with folks? Yeah. I mean, I was in a similar situation. Uh, I, I believed in something, but I just 
religion was man-made for me. I believed religion was a man-made thing because of my experience with Christianity, you know, the, not being able to trust the scriptures, you know, but I still believed in God. I still believed in one God. So I think the majority of people you, you see today, they have this kind of belief where they have hope and belief in something, but they just fell out with, with religion. We just had a discussion a few minutes ago with some mm. of the brothers here about debating with people. And one of the reasons I'm so dead set against this debating idea is because I'm worried that we might actually drive some person yeah. away from belief I altogether. Agree. Totally agree. If, if I show you, for instance, uh, here's a mistake in your literature, or here's a mistake in your scripture, or a mistake with this mm. person that you heard from, and then you take that to mean that uh, the whole religion is false, mm. then this, this is a huge problem. Definitely. And I would like to, to mention uh, also that when you talk to a Jew, a Christian, or a Muslim, mm. that you should be careful how you present what you do. Mm. Because it, at the beginning of it, they have a faith, they have mm. some reason to be there to discuss with you. Mm. But the thing is to don't give them a reason never to come back again. Mm. Exactly. So if you hurt their feelings and you prove mm. that you're right and they're wrong, then they could just go without, exactly what you said, yeah. man-made religion, yeah. forget it. Without giving them the alternative, which is Islam. You know, you can't just pull the rug from under their feet without giving them, you know, the, the true message of Islam, the Quran and the... One of the things that I like to maintain, and for myself even, even before talking to other people, is that all religions will have something that's beneficial. The idea of just becoming an atheist altogether, I don't think is beneficial all the way around. Because from the atheists, we find that yeah. this is the highest rate of suicides. Yeah, yeah. And when I visited Denmark, for instance, they told me the two things that they were famous for. They said, we're famous for, we have the most atheists here. And then I said, okay. And then they said, and the other thing we're famous for is the most suicides. And he's smiling, and I was like, uh, <laughs> so not, far, you, you know, neither one either. of these two things have impressed yeah. me. Yeah. Then when I visited Norway, I heard yeah. the same thing. Same thing. Sweden, I heard the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I visited Finland. And I heard them say the same thing. Each one of them thinks they're number yeah. one yeah. for atheism yeah. and number one for suicides. Uh, I think that... Because uh, atheism goes a step further where there's no purpose of life. Like at least all these other religions have, like you said, some sort of uh, a guidance or benefit. Yeah. You know, as, as we say, most of the religions did originate in Islam. They were originally from, well, from Islam. Now, I, in your podcast, I don't know who watches your programs, but if you have people who watch this program mm. who are not Muslim at all, they might be objecting to some of the terminology that we mm. use without realizing it's the same thing that they meant to say anyway. Yeah. For instance, one of the things I like to do is to break down what words mean mm. and, and not just throw it out because the media today, the news, yeah. for instance, will use the word Islam and terrorism simultaneously, just yeah. like Islamic terrorism, yeah. terrorism for Muslims. And, yeah. and then when you find out the meaning of real terrorism and the meaning of real Islam, these two words are contradictory. Mm. Actually, what we call an oxymoron. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you understood that, it would be real hard. Mm. And that one of the things I like to do in all the programs that we do, especially when we have something that's new to me, like this is, I like to mention that the word Islam is an Arabic word. Mm. Unfortunately, it's never translated in the English translations from the Arabic of the mm. Quran. And this complicates matters uh, extremely mm. because the word is misperceived or misunderstood by those who are not Muslims. Mm. And then even from the Muslims themselves, they don't realize what it does mean unless mm. they're Arabs. So the word Islam is come, it's a noun, but it comes from a verb, aslama. Mm. Aslama 
now let's break that word mm. down and find out what's in there first and foremost is surrender a complete and total surrender mm. and whenever I'm doing a program for the universities and that I ask the audience put your hands up like this mm. go ahead put your hands up mm. go ahead come on <laughs> all right now you got your hands mm. up and this is surrendering you know mm. somebody said put your hands up yeah. that's it now so, put your hands like this uh, t touch them up at the top now you're ready for airport security. You know? <laughs> now this is a, yeah, yeah. psychologically I'm preparing them for yeah. a word that I'm going to come to. Supposedly. And we all need security, right guys? Yeah. Then I go through. Yeah, yeah. It's surrender. It's submission to God. Yeah. This is the meanings yeah. of the word itself. Sincerity, <coughs> obedience to God. Now by the way, let's go back to sincerity. Can you force sincerity on anybody? Again, it's an oxymoron. Yeah. It doesn't work. How in the world could you say you forced sincerity? If it was <coughs> forced, it wasn't sincere. True. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So at that stage, what we want to do is think, use the brain for a minute. Mm. How could Islam be spread by the sword if it must be sincere, yeah. a desire for someone to want it? Yeah. And so then all of a sudden we find out that, okay, so if it's mm. forced on me, then it wasn't Islam, mm. it was his slam. <laughs> you get that? Yeah, you to yeah I got that from Islamic Siraj Wahaj. <laughs> he <laughs> he sure. mentioned that in one of his talks. Shaykh, so, just for those who may not have come across you before, you've not always been a Muslim. You actually accepted Islam later in life. That was minus 28 years ago. <laughs> Still, still working on that minus. Thing. Subhanallah. So you, you've been a Muslim twenty-eight years. Yes, now. sir. Subhanallah. So you accepted Islam at eighteen. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, mashallah. You so, know, you had a, a, a long life of uh, being a Christian. Subhanallah. My father, my whole family, really, were very much dedicated Christians. Just before you start. I want to bring you, Sean. He's going to give us a nice cup of coffee. Ah. Yusha, come in the shop. I want to introduce everyone to Yusha as well, because he's one of the faces behind Guiders TV. If you can just come in this this shot here, give a salam, <laughs> brother Yusha. Mashallah, he works with you on Guiders TV. I keep him behind the cameras. For a reason. <laughs> well, you, I remember he's you too cute. Didn't you tell me? <laughs> I think you told me he's got a good radio face. He's got a good face for radio. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he's too cute. I don't want the folks to say, "Oh, wait a minute, we we really have this guy." <laughs> but there were, I, want, I wanted to finish what we yeah. were saying about the word aslama, because there is a key point in it. Mm. To understand aslama, surrender to God submit to God, obey God, in sincerity. Mm. So we've already shot down that idea of forced conversions. Yeah. Islam spread by the sword, mm. impossible. Something can spread by the sword, don't get me wrong. Mm. You could say Muslim rule yeah. spread by the sword. Yeah, yeah that could happen. Yeah. But the word Islam itself does not yeah. lend it to that kind of yeah. thinking. The police system's never been Then we it. still have some more words. We still have security. Mm. That's yeah. in there. That's yeah. why I want to go back to that word secure. We've said we all need security. Mm -hmm. And today more than ever before. Mm -hmm. People are very airport security, computer security, online security, home security. We've got mm -hmm. all these ideas mm -hmm. about security. There is no security except that that comes from the one almighty God. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing is peace. Well, the word salam in Arabic is translated as peace. Hmm. The same exact word is mispronounced from one or the other from Hebrew, shalom. Shalom, shalom aleikum yeah, they say that, is yeah. salam aleikum. There's no difference yeah. in this and if you read the Bible in Hebrew or you read the Bible in Arabic you find that it was Jesus who entered upon his followers and he greeted them with a shalom aleikum or salam alaikum. Peace be upon you. And that's what he said. And it still yeah. says that in the Bible translation. And this is how we greet as Muslims. If we yeah. use this to explain to a Jew or a mm. Christian, we've found a common ground immediately. Yeah. 
people so that we can then open a door to go to a little bit further. Because I'm not here to try to teach people how to think. All I want to do is stimulate the thinking process and let them find for themselves, just like I had to find. It took me three months of spending with a Muslim, traveling with me every day, asking him questions, debating with him, arguing with him. Yeah, but by the way, he didn't debate back and he didn't argue back. Swimming. But it was me trying to convert him <coughs> to become, I wanted him to become a Christian. Yes, yeah, subhanAllah. At the end, I realized that what he was saying was what Christianity really does teach. Mm. Now, one of the things that you mentioned early on... Sheikh, just before we move on, uh, do you remember we met the brother, Muhammad? Um, we, we brought him over to... Uh, was it Qatar? Yes, we did. Qatar, yes. He was with us. SubhanAllah, and I know recently he uh, passed he away. He passed away in December of last year. SubhanAllah, I see him. Allah. Yeah, SubhanAllah. It was great to meet him, you know, the man behind... The Dawah of Yusuf Estes, subhanAllah. Simple man? Yeah. Peaceful man? Yeah. You'd never think that this guy would be... But the power doesn't come from a loud voice. Yeah. And the power doesn't come from being able to outwit someone. Very gentle. The real power comes in the ability to be silent and allow others to speak and get mm. it off their chest. Mm. And if they've got something else to say, let them say it. <coughs> yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're not really there to guide anybody. It's true. If Allah, God Almighty, He doesn't want mm -hmm. somebody to be in this state of mm -hmm. security and submission to Him, then that's His choice. It's not This ours. is one of the key points I try to tell people, you know, when they get in, they start in their journey on giving dawah, to remind them that your job is to convey, not to convince. It's Allah who does the guiding. That's, that's very well said. I like that. You know, you get the message across. Make sure they understand what we believe. And let Allah do the rest. You know, because our job is just to guide people to the path. And it's Allah who guides the hearts. And um, so many people don't understand that concept. And it's vital you understand that if you're getting into dawah or you're a part of dawah. If you think that your words... Your intelligence is going to change someone. You've, you've misunderstood the, the whole point of Dawah. I do believe that having contact with a human being is essential, very essential, because this is what Islam is teaching us. Yeah. The word in Arabic for human being is annas, or insan, and depending on how you use it in a sentence. And what that means is somebody who needs intimacy. And that means you, you've got to have other people around you. And you also need to have an intimacy with your creator. Mm. At the same time, it is meaning another word, which is related because from the same root, it means to forget. And yeah. human beings are the very yeah. most forgetful on the planet. Because we, yeah, we yeah. get and forget. Mm. But Allah gives and forgives. Yeah, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Sheikh, you've had a, in these 28 years of being a Muslim, you've had a very interesting journey. Every day is interesting. You know, you, you've traveled the whole world, mashallah. Not, how many countries have you traveled? Do you, do you, have, do you have any idea? I, I used to count, when, when I was a lot younger, I used to count the states that I had not visited because it was easier. SubhanAllah. And now I've visited all but two of the states, Alaska and Hawaii. And I haven't been there yet. I've flown over both of them. Yeah. So uh, cool. in that sense, I have gone over them. At the same time, as far as countries go, I'd say it would be about 50-50. I could either count the ones I've been to or count the ones that I haven't been to. Cool. But the biggest one I've never been to is Russia. I haven't Russia. been to Russia. I've done a transit in Russia for a few hours, but nothing more. I haven't even yeah. had that. Yeah, but uh, Sheikh, I, one I of visited your, China. That's a big one. One of your life works, you've, you've been a part of many TV channels, like oh, yeah. Peace TV, oh, yeah. Quota TV. And you also have From your own... From the beginning. 
You also have your own Guidus TV. Guidus TV. Subhanallah, this is your baby, mashallah, of uh, your own TV channel. You've helped with it. Yeah, alhamdulillah. It's a, a great channel. We've done many uh, programs. And I like the us in it because I think it's all of us yeah. who work together. Subhanallah. But I remember watching your videos in the very early times of me being a Muslim, even before I was a Muslim. I was watching uh, Guidus TV, I was watching The Dean Show. I, I've said this so many times, you know, seeing people like yourself, Abdurrahim Green, Lawrence Brown. You know, I didn't think Lawrence white people. Brown. I didn't oh, think white people could be Muslim. A, he's amazing. <laughs> I didn't think you could be a white Muslim until I seen you know thinking Subhanallah, I actually have a chance, you know, of being a Muslim. I actually met Dr. Lawrence um, last February in Medina. Oh, you, you yeah. did get a chance he, to meet him. He's actually gone back. He's to tall, the isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking up, but Mashallah, he's actually gone back to the states uh, over the season of Hajj. I wanted to meet him in Medina, but he's he's, he's travelled. But very nice brother, mashallah. But I know you, him, and brother Eddie are very close. You're doing dawah around the states, travelling, and even today you're on the road. Whenever you, uh, whenever I see you, you're on the road, literally driving from state to state, going to different mosques. Alhamdulillah. I, I met one one uh, of the students in Medina uh, this week, and I told him you're here. And he said, oh, I've not seen you since, since I was a kid. And he was doing a whole lecture on his phone, Guidus TV Live, uh, in the masjid, subhanAllah. He was broadcasting live uh, for the people at home. When we started this out, I didn't intend to do anything more than to just help the people that, that ask me. Uh, they used to come to my house in the beginning and we we sit in the house and it got so full we went to the backyard and then we laid canvas down over the backyard the whole backyard and the ladies would sit in the house with the window open because we didn't have air conditioning so they'd sit with the window open and they would listen and we would put it on a, a microphone then the neighbors would come over and try to hear what's going on too and, mm -hmm. and uh, it was we had a lot of fun with it and then when I moved from Texas to Virginia then we had to kind of switch a little bit around and start doing the internet. I was learning how to use the chat rooms and so on. And in those days, we had something called AOL, American Online, mm -hmm. and they sent these uh, uh, discs, the AOL disc, mm -hmm. out everywhere. They were free. You could just plug them into your computer and start it up, and then this would give you the ability to go online through your telephone line. The sounds that the phone that it yeah. makes, and then you would be <coughs> online, and you could. Yeah. Uh, but we started doing the chatting as a, like a radio show, mm. and I'd use it like a radio voice to say that you're listening to Chat Islam. I'm your host Yusuf Estes, and today we've got some super guests lined up for you. So stay tuned, and you know, and that's how we started the chat rooms. And uh, one time I was in a hurricane, and I still did the chat in the middle of the hurricane, and I was did it from a Dunkin' Donuts in Florida, and the door blew off of the Dunkin' Donuts while I was there doing the. The whole thing. Yeah, look at the, the strange things that happened. But eventually it got to where we were doing television. And mm. that got real expensive real fast because the cameras, the lighting, the sound systems, mm. and uh, all the rest of it. Way up. Too so much. I met, that's, that's when I actually met you. When I first met you, it was in Chicago. There's a big yeah. conference there, and you was in the corner. You had your big. TV set up. You had there was you, um, the Sheikh Sabri, and Mutahir uh, Sabri, and Sheikh Kareem Abu Zaid. Kareem Abu Zaid was there with us. And that's why I met you. I was with Brother Eddie. Yes. We did some live shows with uh, yes. Jada's TV. That's true. That's how we did start. I remember that. It's uh, I remember you came to the UK. We travelled all over the UK. Mashallah. I had a stopping, lot of fun with that. Stopping at every service station for a Costa coffee. Do you remember <laughs> that I bought some equipment from them and and was for my phone? Yes. 
and I tried to make it work, and uh, yeah. we we're going to try to broadcast. Trying to do that. live from the from the M sixty two, the motorway. <laughs> Subhanallah. But now the the equipment I've seen you using here is uh, very portable, very easy to carry. Yeah, I mean, the technology is you know is is advanced, and uh, and I think the prices come down yeah. instead of yeah. tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. A person can set up uh, pretty much everything for yeah. less than ten thousand yeah. dollars to do. Uh, yeah, a couple of thousand, to be honest. Depending on yeah, how. Depending on how big you want to go. Yeah. Tell us about your time with Peace TV and Huda TV. You've done a lot of work with them. Is I don't think we got enough time to cover all that, but I would tell you that I was contacted by Huda TV to come over and do a series with them. And when I got over there, that what they asked me to do, they said we want to do. The ten people promised the paradise. Mm. Ten people promised Jenna. And I said, okay. And he said, and we want to do it in 30 episodes. And I said, okay, you've already got a problem. Because ten yeah. doesn't divide up into 30 pieces. But we can't take ten and divide it up into 30 pieces. Mm. It won't work. And the gentleman who was handling it, he said, well, I did it for a radio show. I said, then you do it for the TV show because I'm not going to do it. And we got into it a little bit, but he was very, very acceptable. And he said, okay, do what you want to do. I said, I prefer to do something a little bit different to remove the uh, misconceptions that Muslims and non-Muslims have about Islam. You know, let's get rid of superstitions. Let's get rid of traditions and cultures that have entered into Islam. And let's get rid of these, these very drastic opinions that people hold that are very un... Uh, they're very biased and mm -hmm. unsubstantiated. So let's call the program Lifting the Fog. And mm -hmm. so that's what we did. That was the first program we did for there. And then we did one about the companions called Way of the Muslim. We mm -hmm. did do that. So I had an inside program that we did on mm -hmm. a very elaborate setup. And it was called Way of the Muslim. But then the one that we did for the lifting the fog, we did it outside. And that was in Egypt. Was and it hot, was hot. But we did it outside. I wanted to get that feeling of mm. the openness and mm. the and we took a chair and we put it out in these different places and set it up and sometimes at night, sometime in the daytime. And sometime and I got burned really bad while I was out there. My it's face funny. got burned. And then we had flies all over us at one time and one of the brothers came over, he had a spray can, and he sprayed me right in the face with insect spray while I had all that, um, my, the sunburn. And, yeah, it was a lot of amazing things happened. So, but that started it. Mm. And then uh, Peace TV, they asked me to come over there and to help them get started with that. And we did some programs, but Abdurrahim Greenman had already done some stuff with them. Yeah. Uh, it was good. But you know, as, as I'm talking, I recall the very first thing that I did on television for Islam mm. was in 2000. I was mm. invited to go to Karachi, Pakistan, and I went mm. over there and they asked me to answer some questions. And I would do that, just little programs for the universities and that. Mm. And somebody come up with the idea, why don't we record it? Come on over and we'll do that. And he said, I want to give you off-the-wall questions. I said, no, we're not going to do that. I have a website, and it has 50 questions about Islam. You can choose from those 50, mm. and then we'll do that. Mm. And then I'll go through and uh, be sure that what I'm saying, I know what I'm talking about. <coughs> yeah. So we also brought a scholar over there in Pakistan who would listen and be sure that what I said was right, mm. because I didn't want to make any mistakes in that. Mm. And then he would say, okay, this one, this one, this one. And we went through them. And uh, it was such a big hit because up to that point, nobody had really done anything in English and mm. circulated it. Or what do they call it when they put it in syndication? They call it syndication, yeah. yeah. So that got syndicated. It went to Canada. It went to Pakistan. It went it's to the fun. UK. Uh, each, and each one in a different uh, year. So, and mm -hmm. they did it at Ramadan at the time of Sefri. So when people are starting their fast in the mm. morning, they're eating food and watching me on TV. And then at the end of that program, you got to stop eating because then that meant uh, mm. 
that was the time for, for uh, your Sahur is over. Mm. All right, well, that's how people got to think of me as, oh, when I see you, I get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> that would be uh, uh, SubhanAllah, you've had such an amazing, uh, eventful Muslim life for the past 28 years. My life has always been eventful, trust mm. me. <laughs> now, I remember you, you telling me uh, you used to wrestle bears as a kid. You know what, somebody <laughs> posted this today. And, uh, well, I saw it today. I didn't think it was posted before. But it was in response to something I did a couple months ago. And I was talking and, and moving my hands around and talking and going on about this and that and throwing jokes in there. And somebody, not Muslim, he said, where did they get this clown? Okay, and then some mm. people responded back to him, how dare you say that about that? We love him and all. So I just answered him back and I said, well, first of all, I don't take any exception to you calling me that, not at all, because actually I was a clown, all right? <laughs> Proud of that because I did it because I wanted to make people happy. Mm. And so I would put on that clown makeup and the big rubber nose and put on the big funny mm. outfit and the fat shoes and all the rest of it. So and when, when are you going to remove it? <laughs> 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 you can edit that out, by the way. <laughs> So uh, the, the people that I talked to and did the programs, I always played a silent clown. I wouldn't talk. Mm. I like that because it's less uh, intimidating. And I would go up and be shy and look at them and talk to them like this. And, and that would get a, an image across and people would, and then I would have these little gags and things that I would do and make them laugh. And I liked doing that. However, there was, came a time in my life, of course, when I grew up and got married and had children. It's, I didn't have time for all that uh, anymore. But I always had the desire to meet more people and visit with people and help. I like to go, for instance, we were in the music industry. My sister and I were both uh, musicians, mm -hmm. and we would go entertain people in uh, senior centers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they would be really old people. Sometimes we'd go in there and they'd say, oh, my son, come on over, here's my son. And I never saw this guy before in my life, you know. <laughs> Saying, does my mother know about this? <laughs> you know, what's going on? But they would be confused and they'd see my sister and they'd say, oh, this is our daughter. Or there's somebody would say, oh, this, this, they're married. And no, no, thing, this is my sister. I guess the good thing about that is you could do the same act every day. Yeah, you probably <laughs> could. <laughs> we did that for a while, but when I got to Islam, I had already been working closely with the Christian community mm -hmm. and trying to entertain and at the same time bring a message about the belief in God. How mm -hmm. important is it for us to have something that we could anchor into? Mm -hmm. And when you have a firm, rooted belief in God and you have a relationship with God, that is a very important thing. Mm. Now, if you said, well, it's not the correct belief. No. Okay, hold on a second. Do you know that even in Islam, there are mm. people who are going to look at Muslims, mm. who are going to look at other Muslims and say, well, you don't have the correct belief. Mm. Have you heard about that? Yeah. Yeah, they'll say that. Now, at what point do we stop saying that? Mm. Because if I have a belief, how do you know what I believe? Mm. And if I have the wrong idea, maybe you'll help me get closer without hurting my feelings mm. to a, a better belief. And I accept that. Mm. But I won't accept that you will publicly ridicule me yeah. and put me down and make yeah. me feel bad. It's like... Unless you want to call me a clown, that's okay. <laughs> Can I share something with you? And I, I want to say this in the light of what we're talking about, how important it is to be careful how we do things. Mm. The grandsons of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, they were in an area where people were making the ablution or wudu, for preparing for the, the salat or the prayers, and we washed for that. And there was a gentleman there who, an older person, that he was putting the water on in the wrong order and doing things the wrong way. 
So instead of going over and saying, you know, our grandfather was the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and you are doing it all wrong. I mean, you, you are lame, man, because that, and they didn't do that. Instead, what they did was to ask <coughs> him if he would mind judging between them about what was right about it's their wudu. And as one of them would do the wudu and the other one, and then he realized that, oh my God, I did it wrong. Because he knows they're the grandsons of the Prophet yes. mom, without saying anything. And then they realized that they went off and then they look back and they see him remaking the same mm -hmm. wudu. Now, if this is the way of our Prophet and his family, mm -hmm. then what are we doing hurting people's feelings? Yes, so I like, I very much like the idea of a dialogue. Mm -hmm. I've had so many preachers ask me to come more than one time to their churches. Sure. And I've had it in Hagerstown, Maryland. I was mm -hmm. giving a talk in a church on Sunday with the congregation sitting with us, a very lovely preacher was there. But I told them from the beginning, I'm not going to go in if you've got any idols or statues or pictures or stuff around that. That's not my deal. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm not going to go in and observe your preaching because I don't want to disturb what you're doing with your people. Whatever mm -hmm. you want to do, you could do it. I don't want you to be self-conscious. I don't want them to be self-conscious. Mm -hmm. But then when you're ready for me to come out, I'll do what I do. So I came out and I explained the word that I just talked about, what's sure. Islam, right? And a young lady, maybe 20 years old, she stood up and she said, I would love to be a Muslim. And she looked over at the preacher and she said, is it okay if I accept Islam? And the preacher said, go ahead. You know, in our belief that we're, they were a Unitarian church, by the mm. way. And he said, in our belief, as long as you believe in God, that's the main thing. She said, mm -hmm. I really believe in God, and I want to do what he's talking you know, about. I want to show you something, actually. Well, guess what? Yeah. I'm not finished. She said, thank you, Daddy. It was her father. SubhanAllah. And then a gentleman stood up, and he accepted Islam. And then after that, we all sat together and talked about it for a while. And then we went over to the mosque, the masjid there mm. in Hagerstown, and they formally accepted Islam there in the masjid. And I heard that they later on got married. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. It's amazing. Go now, what I want to show you this video. This is um, a brother from the UK. He's come on Hajj. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum to Allah. I'm just here. On the Hajj, with can Brother watch Yusuf, it. I'll, I'll I'll watch. Watch. all the way from Birmingham, yeah. uh, England. And uh, can you just tell us how you came to Islam? You just tell me a little story and why your name is Yusuf. Okay. Um, so uh, I became I became a Muslim about a year and a half ago. Um, I, I was Catholic. I was raised as a Catholic, and uh, also I was uh, I was a musician. And um, I started to feel guilty after a, a few years of doing. You know, after lots and lots of years of doing my job, um, so I started researching Catholicism again, and uh, I, I, I had lots of problems in my heart about it. Um, a few of my friends who are Muslim, they knew more about uh, the, the Bible than most Christians, so they asked me to um, watch some videos by a brother called Yusuf Estes, and uh, I watched one particular video where he was giving dawah to uh, a brother from Africa. And uh, it was one of those very, very emotive uh, videos where you know uh, he took his shahada, um, and at the same time he took his shahada, I was actually feeling like I wanted to become a Muslim myself, but I just needed that push. And um, you know, alhamdulillah, I, I, I took my shahada in my bedroom. Um, at the same time, I was watching the video with Yusuf Estes giving uh, Brother Dawah and getting him to take shahada. Um, and I found out, you know, why I was crying so much after uh, after I did it, and um, and and so that, that when I found out about me crying and why I was crying, um, uh, because my sins were being erased, but I only knew about that after it happened. Because Yusuf Esther only spoke about this after. Um, it just it was just so much truth that just you know just shocked shocked me so much. Um, so uh, the brothers were asking me, you know, what what are you going to call yourself now? So. 
um, I call myself Yusuf. So, uh, yeah. so you're called Yusuf after Yusuf Vestas? Yes, I am. Is it Yusuf Vestas or just Yusuf? No, it's just Yusuf. Okay, yeah. Yusuf, Yusuf, Abdullah. Yusuf Abdullah. Well, uh, this, this, uh, for Hajj, this huh? is the Hajj. I met this brother on the Hajj. Oh. And our particular group, uh, Dar es Salaam, they sponsor about 30 people a year. People who are poor, people who are sick, uh, new Muslims, people in the community that can't afford to go to Hajj, who they think, you know, will benefit. And subhanAllah, I met this brother on this package. And he said, my name's Yusuf. And he wanted to subhanAllah what he told me is because he, because of your video. I've had a lot of people come up to me and tell me that they benefited, Muslim and non-Muslim alike, from the programs that we've done. And it, I, you, you may not know how much I need to hear it, not from an ego point of view, but to help my confidence to keep me going. Yeah. Because sometimes, you you know, the shaitan comes to all of us. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like, oh, I'm wasting my time. I'm not doing a very good mm -hmm. job. Uh, I need to go back to some of this or that. Or, you know, maybe that people don't really need me. They're just mm -hmm. tolerating me. Because I know I'm kind of wild, you know. <laughs> and so whenever somebody comes up and says, you know what, I come to Islam. It happened one time. We were going for Hajj. And we were at the airport, at Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C. And we were ready to get on the plane, the Saudi Airlines. And a man came up to me and he had his two towels on and he's all ready to go. And he said, I just want you, he said, I want to meet you and I want you to meet my wife <coughs> and my children. And uh, I said, somebody come. And he said, I came to Islam because of you. And he said, and she came to Islam because of you. And we're raising these children in Islam because of you. So thank you very much. And I started crying. I couldn't hold it back because it was uh, it was tears of joy. Yeah. That feel like that you, what you've done is helped somebody get closer to the Lord. Somebody who is closer to God, closer to their true message of all the prophets. And I'd like to go back to to what we started the program with when we talked about some of the basic things. Mm. If you believe in God already, you're, you're ahead of somebody who doesn't. Mm. And if you would like to increase your belief, that is something that we should share and mm. kind of kick it back and forth and see what will help us get closer to God. Mm. And one of the questions that Dr. Zachar Naik was asked, this one person was really saying that all the other religions, uh, God is getting tough on people for murder or for stealing or for, you know, he won't forgive them for adultery or something like that. But he said in Islam, the only thing God won't forgive is somebody who had made a partner with him in worship. And these other religions, they don't have that. Mm. They're not, there are other gods out there, they're not worried about it. And mm. this particular person was a Hindu, and he was saying this god and that god, or they wouldn't care if you worshipped other gods. Mm. And then I only got to hear the beginning of it, but as soon as he started, I knew where he was going to go with that. Because in the reality, there really is only one god. Mm. And whatever he has put us here for, mm. he's determined that purpose, not us. Yeah. We do not determine our purpose. Mm. We determine what we want to do, and maybe we'll do it, maybe we won't. So where we have similarities, some people will say, mm. okay, you, uh, that Muhammad, peace be upon him, actually found some scrolls in a cave, all right, okay. and he read them, and he figured it all out, and he <coughs> put this religion together. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll go along with you for that. Oh, just to, to go along with you, all right, let's do that. Even though he couldn't read or write, and that's famous. He never learned how to read or write. So then some other people, they figured that out, and they said, well, he got some other people to teach him that. Mm. Who? How come nobody knows about this? But then he, they'll go to another level, and they say, well, whatever. He, he did it somehow. Okay. So whatever copy he <coughs> found, mm. 
of those scriptures must have been a pretty good copy. Because today we have over 40 million people who have memorized every single word of that and <coughs> are reproducing it orally mm. in our prayers and in our minds and in our habits mm. and in our, especially in the month of Ramadan, all of that again and again and again. And that's all around the world. I've been around the world several times and everywhere mm. I go, every Muslim says exactly the same words, not close. Mm exact and you pronounce it exactly yeah. the same and there's uh, 600 plus pages in the quran and that's kind of you know that's pretty it's impressive. powerful impressive stuff. and it is the book that is used in teaching arabic because mm. it is the highest form of arabic called mm. fusa or classical arabic mm. that there is on the planet so he did a pretty good job, if that's what you're accusing of him. So why don't you look at it and see what it says? So and subhanAllah, and you've got and Islam is the biggest religion in the world, you know, because Christianity arguably is different religions. You have Catholicism, which is nine hundred million, which which would be the biggest sect of Christianity, but they would say that the other Christians are not Christian. And they did say that. Yeah. Well, in 2007, yeah. Yeah. the the, the uh, Archbishop, mm. uh, no, uh, what's he called? The Pope. The Cardinal. Mm. One of the Cardinals said that Islam has surpassed us in mm. number, yeah. all the Christians, meaning the Catholic Christians. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you're right about that. You know, we, we have the biggest body of humans which agree on the same belief system. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Shay, yeah. just before we finish. Mm. I want you to tell us how people at home can actually support Guiders TV and where can they can actually view uh, your programs and your content. First, uh, first and foremost, what I want to tell you about is that Guiders TV is taken from Edina Sarat al mm. Guide us. Edina. Mm. All right. But it also means guide the U.S., right? Mm. But we actually mean guide us too, because mm. we're not saying that we're the ones that are yeah. guiding, you're not. We all need guidance every day. The, and as far as supporting it, the first thing I ask everybody to do is pray mm. and ask God to accept from us and keep us going, yeah. because ultimately he's the one that's gonna make it happen. Mm. The number two thing that I would like to bring into this as far as how you can support is to share the message of Guidance TV, let people know about it, how they can get involved with mm -hmm. Guidance TV and the new boxes that we have mm -hmm. that we're distributing all over the planet. And then thirdly, if you would like to get some really big rewards with the law, then you can donate, but we don't ask you to donate a large amount. We say just do a little bit of something, but do it every month, mm -hmm. do it regularly. And then God is the one who's gonna reward you for whatever you do, but keep it sincere between you and him and let him reward you and whatever it is you do, that's, you're blessed. How you can do that? We have a website which is called DonateToIslam.com. Donate to Islam. Some of the funds go for our websites <coughs> and we have 4,200 websites. Subhanallah. Yeah. And some of the funds will go to the distribution of the boxes that we're putting out the TV boxes and some of the funds will go to the actual broadcasting and the making the programs that we do but all of the funds will go for the Dawa thank you for joining us with you again John thank you for hosting us and bringing us on subhanallah you know we're very close we've known each other for a while and it's good to see you again so for those at home who are listening, please, you know, go to the link below in the description. We're going to put the links for Guidance TV. Share the podcast. Share it with your friends and family. Also, check out the Guidance TV YouTube. Share the videos. And uh, inshallah, we'll, we can do another podcast in the future, Sheikh. Inshallah. I'd love to do that. Inshallah. Thank you again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.